Thank you, Darren. And I'm, I'll definitely add coffee into my uh, presentation previously. And we should uh, find a way to uh, identify uh, correctly the speakers for next, week, uh, for next year after uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, our uh, next uh, speaker uh, is going to be uh, Esti Peshin, that uh, although one of uh, several of my uh, colleagues and uh, uh, experts uh, are by the name, uh, uh, by the name uh, Alex and others, and I realize that uh, one of uh, uh, Esti's uh, um, quick, uh, quick uh, animals, uh, her dog, uh, by the name uh, Alex, so I, I'm going to, uh, uh, to meet her uh, uh, later. And um, I want to invite to the stage Esti Peshin, who is the general manager of the cyber division in the Israeli aerospace industries. Please, Esti. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Yaniv, for this uh, interesting introduction. So, a so quick story for you. Well, Yaniv uh, insisted that each of the speakers in his panel will tell him something interesting about himself. So, I received a mail about a week ago, and I ignored it. And then I received another mail two days ago, and I ignored it as well. And then I received a phone call before the panel, and I tried to ignore it, but eventually we came up with the fact that my dog's name is Alex. So, uh, here goes. I'm, I'm the most boring person in the world. But today I'm going to speak about uh, cyber innovation or maybe on what nation states should do in order to balance the equation. Now, I didn't coordinate anything with Matan, nor with Darren, but I'm going to address the equation that Matan showed and hopefully respond a little bit to Darren's call for action. So, I think one of the most important elements in innovation is creating an effective ecosystem. In Israel Aerospace Industries, IAI is proud to lead the Israeli Cyber Companies Consortium. This consortium harnesses the best and the finest of the Israeli cyber technology in order to provide our end users with end-to-end -end cyber solutions. This consortium includes smaller companies, startups, which have very innovative solutions addressing singular problems as well as large multinational companies. All of them are Israeli, all of them have state-of-the-art technology and together we are able to provide end-to-end -end solutions. Now let's talk a little bit about the cyber, about the cyber ecosystem. Now I'm sure that throughout the day you've heard a lot about, well, cyber is unsafe, cyber is insecure, a cyber has significant threats. A, this is a, a, a statement a, a, by the U.S. government stating that cyber is one of the most cybersecurity is one of the most serious economic and national security challenges. I, t I tend to agree, by the way. And as you can see, there are a lot of statements relating to cyber. Awareness is growing. However. When we are looking at the effective results, we are seeing that the cyber attacks are actually succeeding. And I'm, I'm sure that this light motif has been presented today in many presentations. Even Darren uh, addressed this uh, with, with one of the attacks he presented. Now, when we are talking about, uh, uh, about cyberspace, we're seeing cyber as a strategic threat. We are seeing a more and more state and superpower involvement in cyber. Cyber crime is growing. Cyber attacks on critical infrastructures are growing. We are seeing large scale industrial espionage attempts, and we are seeing two, I would say, newer trends. The first one is CNI, computer network influence, where the cyber attackers are trying to influence our minds, are trying to cause us to do things that we initially did not intend to do. And the second one is the utilization of public available malware in cyber attacks. More and more malware is being distributed within cyberspace. When we are looking at strategic trends, we identify four strategic trends. The first one is the weaponization of the cyber domain. This is extremely important for us as a defense contractor. 
We are seeing also lack of attribution. Attribution has been a challenge throughout the years. The fact that we cannot identify the source of the cyber attack prevents us from being able to, uh, to retaliate. And if we cannot retaliate, there is no deterrence. So the cost of a cyber attack is still very low. Without a solution for the attribution challenge, cyber will remain unsafe. Cyber will remain insecure. We are seeing also a, a widening skill gap. This gap uh, derives from the fact that there is a talent crunch in cyber. We need more and more cyber experts. Everything is becoming more computerized. We need to secure the domain, but we have a less and less people that are able to fill the cyber roles. And in order to do that, in order to fill the roles, we are utilizing people that have lesser skills. So there is a widening gap between the good guys and the bad guys, and this is in favor of the bad guys. And finally, we are seeing the new technologies with, which Darren spoke a lot about, uh, um, IoT, cloud, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And the bad guys, the hackers, are eyeing these technologies in manners that would allow them to utilize them to, to create, I would say, more sophisticated cyber attacks. So, again, I, I'm sure you saw these uh, types types of slides uh, throughout uh, uh, the presentations today. But what has changed? Number one, security solutions, singular security solutions, don't really work. They may solve a singular problem, but looking at the ecosystem, they do not really work. The perimeter is insecure. Attempts to secure the perimeter eventually fail because we need to insert data into the network. Connectivity is increasing, even in operational networks. And finally, supply chain is a, is a huge challenge because our systems are becoming more and more complex. We utilize more and more vendors as part of our solutions, so we are dependent also on the vulnerabilities that our vendors insert into the system. We also have built-in weaknesses that derive, in some cases, from operational constraints. We all understand that cybersecurity is a trade-off. You deploy more security measures, it means that your network may be less stable, may be slower. And in some cases, the operational requirements prevent the deployment of these cybersecurity solutions. So, what should be done? First, let's agree that when we are talking about national grade challenges, we need national grade solutions. The challenges that nation states face are different than the one that organizations face, are different than the one that individuals face. When, <coughs> when we are talking about national grade challenges, <coughs> sorry about that, we require, we require solutions that encompass five elements. Number one, state of the art technology. Number two, effective methodology on how to use the technology. Number three, constant innovation. The threats evolve, the cyber domain evolves. The solutions need to evolve as well. Number four, collaboration, because there is no single company that has the entire solution. And number five, capacity buildup. So when we are talking about national level cyber defense, this defense encompasses several elements. It encompasses cyber threat intelligence, it encompasses the monitoring of constituents or network elements. Everything is fused together, and today we have a, a machine learning and artificial intelligence technologies that allow this fusion to be very effective in order to detect cyber attacks and create situational awareness. We need the ability to conduct incident response. We need the ability to analyze threats post-attack, and we need training capabilities. This is, in essence, what a nation state needs in order to protect itself. Now, one of the most important elements here is capacity buildup. Capacity buildup essentially means how to be more cyber resilient, how to train your cyber forces, your citizens, your children to be more aware of the cyber threats to conduct themselves safely and securely, securely within cyberspace. Now, when we're talking about capacity buildup, the 
textbook solution is to use maturity models. Matan spoke about that. Now, there are many maturity models out there for practically anything and anyone. But the problem with these maturity models is that they are not advanced enough. They don't provide sufficient solutions for critical networks, for critical infrastructures, for mission critical systems, and for nation states. They do not balance the equation, so to speak. So, what needs to be done? I believe that as nation states and in collaboration with other nation states, we need to move from mitigation of attacks to dominance of the cyber domain. And in order to do that, we need three aspects. Number one, national level responsibility and accountability. Number two, advanced capabilities. And here comes the innovation. And number three, freedom of action within cyberspace. In this context, we are proposing and we will uh, describe today, not in this lecture, but for those of you who are interested, please do come and speak to me in the II booth. We are proposing four frameworks. Number one, secure critical digital services. This is, a, a, in essence, a secure web. Now, when we are talking about the web, the web is a very dangerous place. I mean, your children, your grandchildren, are utilizing the web, and we know for a fact that there is anonymization in the web, that there are bad guys there that can hide themselves. So can we create a web that is completely secure in the sense that there is no anonymity? There is full authentication within this web, full physical authentication. So we believe that the answer is yes, and uh, uh, we believe that the technological solutions for creating such a web exist today. So number two, an independent critical infrastructure a critical digital infrastructure. In essence, we're speaking about a secure cloud. The main challenge in a cloud is that it incorporates many, many elements that have the supply chain challenge within them. So when we create a secure cloud, we need to secure each and every one of its elements. Number three is a national level cyber operational accountability. This is, allows for the comprehensive analysis environment for detection and recognition of known malware as well as new malware. In essence, advanced forensics capability. And finally, the advanced operational and technological capability, which is a real-time monitor cap monitoring capability of the national cyberspace. We believe that nation states that would have these four elements would be able, and this is responding to Darren's challenge, would be able to provide their citizens, to provide their enterprises, to provide their critical infrastructures, and to provide the government itself with a safer and more secure cyberspace. So to conclude, the traditional solutions are failing to balance the equation. The equation is extremely complex, but we believe that in order to be able to secure cyberspace, we need a dramatic change. I would even go to the extent of saying a paradigm change. We need a solution that would address the entire ecosystem in a collaborative approach, and that would lead us from mitigation and prevention to cyber dominance. With this, ladies and gentlemen, I conclude my remarks. Thank you very much.